Hello, I'm Dr. Trevor Van Schoenveld, and I'm the program director for the UNMC Infectious Disease Fellowship Program. I want to thank you for your interest in our program and your willingness to interview with us. I'm looking forward to meeting you and talking about what I think is our uh, fantastic program that we've developed here. In this, I'm going to provide an overview of the program, how it's structured, how it works, Obviously, I'm not going to cover everything about our program, and I'd encourage you to ask our faculty and our fellows and myself any questions as we go through the interview process. This is a view of our campus looking east toward the Missouri River. It's a fantastic place to work. One of the things I've really appreciated about uh, UNMC is the people there. They're fantastic people to work with. Omaha is a great place to live. And that is one downside of the remote interview process is you don't get the opportunity to come to campus and see things for yourself. But uh, I do appreciate the advantages of remote interviewing. It makes, I think, things simpler for everyone. Uh, in this, I'm going to cover my goals as a program director, or our goals as a program. I'm going to talk a little bit about how our inpatient uh, experiences are set up, the outpatient uh, experiences, didactic program, how we do research, and then highlight a couple of special things about our program. Uh, this is our leadership team. I've been the program director since we started, and uh, which is over a decade ago. Uh, Dr. Abbas is our associate program director and joined us a few years ago. Dr. Rupp is our division chief. He, he is exceedingly supportive of the program um, and has been in place for more than 10 years. And so a very strong and stable leadership team here uh, at the division and the fellowship. We currently have over 30 faculty uh, and over 100 people in the division. So we have rather a large division um, and really have seen it grow fantastically over the last decade under Dr. Rupp's leadership. Uh, what, are our, what, are, what are our goals? What uh, am I hoping to accomplish uh, when you come and participate in our program? Well, I think the primary thing is I want fellows who are prepared to practice ID in the 21st century, and they're ready to practice in whatever setting that they're interested in participating in. And I know people come to fellowship programs with different goals of where they want to get to. And my goal as a program director is to have a program that helps our fellows accomplish their goals to practice how and where they want. One of the things that I am exceedingly confident in is that when you complete our program, you will be very proficient in diagnosing and managing common and uncommon infectious diseases. We have a diverse experience in our ID program. And some of that is actually supported by what our other clinicians do here outside the ID world, whether it's uh, putting in new advanced cardiac devices. We seem to have new cardiac devices every year, uh, which, you know, eventually some of them get infected. Many different complex surgeries. We have a large oncology population, including a big bone marrow transplant program. We have a large solid organ transplant program where we do all the organs you could think of doing. Uh, we have a big critical care center with many transfers from uh, other institutions. And then we have a large level one trauma service. And so all of those medical cares require the support of infectious disease and you're exposed to novel uh, experiences that you may not uh, at other places. We saw a patient just last week with a cardiac device I'd never heard of or seen before that we were worried it was infected by staph. So you will get those experiences here. Another goal is that you develop some skills in research, particularly in literature review, in understanding how to generate important research questions, how to investigate those research questions, how to look at your data and interpret it, and then how to present it in a way that uh, is convincing. And I'll talk a little bit about research later. And then we also want you to get some real world experience in how do you do infection control? How do you practice antimicrobial stewardship? What does biopreparedness mean? Uh, when someone asked me what to do about MPOX, 
uh, you know, as an ID physician, you kind of actually are the person people are going to ask. And so we want our fellows to be at least somewhat prepared with how to manage those uh, high consequence pathogens. And then last, we wanted to get some experiences in telehealth. Telehealth has really expanded over the last five years. I think it's something that a lot of ID docs are or will be doing. And so it's important you have some understanding of how it works. And then finally, medicine is about multidisciplinary teams. And you, you know, my goal is that you get very comfortable running a multidisciplinary team, knowing how to utilize pharmacy, how to use uh, your uh, institutional resources, your experts in other areas. So those are the goals that you'd really be able to practice effectively and efficiently in the 21st century. I want to talk about our inpatient experiences next. Uh, our general ID service, uh, you spend about four to five months and about five months in the general ID service. This is what you think of, I think, when you think of an ID service. It's a big service, residents, students, pharmacy, um, an attending, it's busy, there are many complicated patients, endocarditis, osteomyelitis, meningitis, post-surgical complications, TB, all the things you would expect to see in a general ID service. Our orthopedic ID service uh, is primarily orthopedic infectious disease, prosthetic joint infections, complex hardware infections, hand infections, deep brain stimulator, although that's not orthopedic, um, we also have some neurosurgical, uh, basically it's the something's been implanted and it is infected service. And uh, it's staffed, and this is unique, I think, to each of our subspecialty ID services, it's staffed by people who really are clinical experts in managing orthopedic ID infections. Uh, same thing on solid organs, same thing on oncology. The faculty on these services are experts in how to manage these services and spend time primarily working on these services. We have a solid organ transplant service where it's all things transplant and some of the advanced cardiac devices like LVADs. Uh, we do heart, lung, liver, small bowel, kidney, pancreas transplants. And so you will see a variety of those. Our oncology ID service is all things with cancer, uh, and we do have a large bone marrow transplant group here. And then finally, our community ID experience, which is a little bit of a different experience. It's general ID patients, but it's at a smaller uh, community hospital in the area. Uh, it's uh, not too far from the main campus, but it's a very different type of hospital. It's primarily community, uh, uh, it's family medicine, there's private practice there. There is some orthopedic ID there as well, but it's a very different service than our other services. It doesn't have uh, a lot of trainees. It's just the attending and the fellow. It's not as busy, uh, but it really is bread and butter general ID uh, and really, I think, gives our fellows more of what you might experience in private practice. And so that's why we, we like it as an experience. Uh, the typical schedule per year I've laid out here, uh, the first year you'll have a month of microbiology. Uh, this is a little slower month and that occurs very early. Also gives you some time to prep for your medicine boards, which it's important that you pass. You'll spend five months on general ID and community ID, doing all sort of general ID stuff. There's a month of ortho, three months of oncology and transplant, and then a couple months of research, which I'll talk about when we talk about research. Year two has much less general ID and ortho ID, still has those three months of uh, oncology and transplant, has a dedicated month of infection control and antimicrobial stewardship, uh, dedicated outpatient month, and I'll talk a little bit about ambulatory stuff in the next slide. And then two to five months of electives and research, kind of depending on where you think you're going, what you want to do, uh, and uh, how this is going to look. We do have an optional third year. Not everyone wants to do, do a third year, not everyone can. And this is really targeted at people who want to stay on and develop a portfolio of experiences to say, take on, um, you know, particularly an academic uh, position. 
So, and that can be in a variety of different areas and is primarily research uh, based, but also has clinical work included as well. Uh, the outpatient experience, what do you do in the ambulatory setting? We have a dedicated HIV clinic, which is uh, about a half a mile from the main campus. Uh, there they manage over a thousand HIV patients. Uh, the fellows spend half a day per week for the entire two years there. Uh, except when they're on general ID because general ID is busy and so they don't go to HIV clinic then. We think two years is important. It really takes, I find, at least a year's worth of clinic time to become comfortable with managing HIV. And we really want that to be a longitudinal experience where you have your patients that you're managing, they get to know you, you get to know them, you kind of see them over the course of an illness. We have dedicated HIV faculty where that's where they focus their time in managing HIV. Uh, you also have some general ID clinic. This occurs during year one. It's uh, four months uh, of weekly general ID clinic. This happens on the month after your general ID rotation. And the goal there is for you to capture patients you saw in general ID in their follow-up visit and to see them. So again, you can see sort of the continuity of the illness over time. Um, <clears throat> that only occurs during year one. We do have an outpatient rotation during year two, which is just outpatient experiences uh, where you uh, see things like viral hepatitis, uh, you go to our uh, non-tuberculous mycobacteria clinic, there's a variety of specialty ID clinics, be it transplant, oncology, um, orthopedics, uh, ID dermatology, uh, wound care. We send you over to CF clinic for an afternoon to see how that world works, STD clinic, um, and then whatever other clinic experiences you're interested in, including travel medicine. So lots of uh, clinical uh, experiences in the ambulatory setting, which we kind of build into that block. Uh, what about our didactic program? We've set up a variety of didactic experiences. Uh, basically, once a week, you'll have a didactic lecture on an ID topic. Twice a month, it will be HIV. We have what we call our HIV roundtable, which includes not only our fellows, but also the Creighton fellows and pediatric ID fellows. And that's taught by our HIV faculty uh, and is a fantastic learning experience. Uh, the weeks you don't have HIV, you will have core curriculum, which is things like endocarditis, antimicrobial resistance, meningitis, the typical ID bread and butter topics. We also have two case conferences our fellows present at, one the uh, second week and one the third week. Uh, usually two fellows present at each conference and that's attended by our faculty in a very interactive and engaging um, uh, experience. We also have a research conference that is once a month that various faculty present at, and then when you're a second year, you'll present at that at the end of second year, summarizing what you did in research. And at that, faculty present the research that they're done, uh, they've done or is ongoing. We also have two journal clubs. Uh, one is a general ID journal club and one is a infection control stewardship specific journal club uh, and those meet monthly and the fellows get to present at those on a rotating basis as do the faculty. Finally, we have a board review, but it's not really a lecture. It's more of a board review session. We do that twice a month. And in that, what we do is send out board review style questions to the fellows. Uh, they review them think of what they think the answer is, and then either myself or Dr. Rupp meet with them and go through the questions. And we talk about why is it this and not that? How should you think through this question? What are sort of the key uh, things that should make you think about that? What are they trying to say? And we try to teach them test taking strategies as well as the, um, you know, the ID topics they need to learn. Research is an important part of your fellowship. Uh, it's a bigger part of your fellowship than it was of your residency. Uh, and that's recognized by ACGME in that they actually have some uh, significant research
is the goal is for every fellow to have at least one good project that they can write up and publish. Most fellows have significantly more than one, but it depends on the type of project they've embarked upon. We have some structures we've built to try to make this research process uh, successful and efficient because sometimes research can be inefficient. One of the things we want to do is sort of set a floor of knowledge for our fellows uh, on how to do research. Uh, and so our institution has a uh, used to be in person, but now it's online curriculum called our Clinical Research Symposium. And in that, the fellows go through and there are lectures on how to complete an IRB. What does informed consent look like? Uh, how do you go about writing specific aims? What should mentorship be? And some statistic basics of statistical analysis. And there, the goal is really to develop some basic foundational knowledge in areas which some fellows may have never been exposed to before. And fellows will do that very early in year one. Uh, we've changed a bit how we do research over the last year, and I would say it's still a little bit of an influx process. We're still uh, tweaking it. Again, the goal to make it more efficient, more effective, easier for fellows to step into research projects. And so what fellows will do is in the fall, typically in September and early October, they'll go around and meet with various groups, stewardship, infection control, transplant oncology, etc. And those groups will present two to four or five research projects that the fellows can engage with. And those are projects where we've really tried to set them up as projects that are ready to take off. The fellows don't have to do a bunch of huge amount of background research. They will do some background research, but they don't, they're sort of ready to go. There's a database that maybe they can use. There's a process already planned. Uh, and so they can really pick the project up and run with it. Because what we've done is put two research months strategically in the winter and spring of first year. So the fellows can really get that project move forward because the goal is for fellows to have an abstract to submit for ID week, which is typically due in May of their first year. Now, at those meetings, the fellows will be presented with these projects after they've sort of seen what's out there and they've thought about what they want to do and who they'd like to work with. They will meet with the mentor for that project. They'll talk through that a little bit more. The fellow will write up a little one page, sort of here's what the plan is. And then the fellow and the mentor will meet with the research committee to talk about the project. And the goal of the research committee is really to give the fellow some feedback uh, on the project. These projects will already have been sort of vetted as uh, good projects for fellows to embark upon. Uh, but the goal of to get that going. And then there's more months in year two um, where the research committee will again meet with the fellow sort of at the end of year one and talk through the process of, uh, you know, where are we going with research moving forward. Uh, some additional activities to just highlight. We do have a dedicated infection control stewardship rotation. I think infection control and stewardship are very important skills for ID fellows to learn. Uh, over half of ID physicians in private practice do one of these, infection control or stewardship. About a third in academic practice do one of these. And so it's important, not just knowledge, but practical skills, I think, particularly if you're going to go out and sell yourself in the job market. These are things you can bring to the table uh, that other people cannot. Another, ex and so in that rotation, you'll work with our uh, stewardship team doing the day-to-day -day activities of stewardship. You'll uh, work with our infection control team, understanding what does infection control do? How do they keep the hospital moving and open and safe for patients? Um, another experience related to infection control is biocontainment and biopreparedness. We have a large, uh, 
um, quarantine center here and have accumulated a number of ID experts in how to manage things like Ebola and MPOX and other high consequence pathogens. We actually have a unique collaboration with the US military where we are house their training program for how to deal with these. And so our fellows actually get to audit the week long military training program and how to manage patients uh, with these high consequence pathogens like Ebola and demonic plague and uh, things where um, you, know, you might have to transport or care for a patient in those areas where they get not only didactic experiences, but hands-on training in the uh, advanced donning and doffing practices required for caring for those patients. And I think that really is unique to our program uh, that fellows get to do this. And then the last thing I'll just mention is conferences. We do send our fellows to ID Week as first years. Uh, ID Week is a fantastic conference. It's a great experience for our fellows. Um, they always come back energized and excited and have learned a ton. It's a little bit like drinking from the fire hose when you go there. Uh, and so as long as our budgetary things continue to be positive, I will continue to send our first year fellows. We also send our second year fellows. I do uh, require that they submit something, preferably a scientific abstract to ID Week. A and so then they get to go as well. And these are some pictures of our fellows and faculty at various ID Week meetings. Now in second year, if our fellows would prefer to go to a different meeting, like say the Shea meeting or Microbe or something else, um, in place of ID week, I'm supportive, but would ask again that they have something they're submitting uh, to that meeting. Uh, finally, I do just want to talk briefly about Omaha. Uh, before I came to Omaha, I really didn't understand what a fantastic place it was to live. It's very affordable, it's very navigable, meaning that you can get around to places in a relatively efficient manner. If I'm sitting in traffic, I'm thinking, what is going on here? Why am I sitting in traffic? People here are fantastically friendly and hospitable, and there are many things to do, whether it's downtown or the zoo. My wife and I really enjoy going to the symphony. We have a fantastic uh, um, Holland Center for that. There's lots of outdoor activities and many things you can do. And I'd encourage you to, if you've not been to Omaha, research the city. And with that, again, I would just like to say thank you for taking the time uh, to listen to this. Thank you for taking the time to meet with us and for us to talk about our program. And I look forward to meeting with you and answering your questions. Thank you.